Synobius Nutrition, and we're going to talk about how to measure fat loss progress. Hello everybody, this is episode 12 of No BS Nutrition. You can check out my other podcast right here. I talk about the scale weight, how it's not effective to see fat to muscle. I talk about body fat percentages. I talk about Ozempic. I highly suggest you check out all these other podcasts. You can get a lot of information, a lot of other sources other than me, of course. And that's really it. Stay tuned for this video. This one's going to be pretty short, so pay attention. Fat loss progress. Explain fat loss progress. How do you start fast or slow? So it depends. It depends what, how did you start it. Did you start it when are you overweight? Do you did a mini cut essentially? You didn't know it was a mini cut, but did you did you cut your calories in half to a quarter? So did you do that for about eight weeks or did you do slow? Let's start with the fat cut. Let's start with the faster cut because that's the most commonly cut that everyone does. They want to fast, fast, fast. But the problem with doing a fast cut, you have a higher chance of losing more muscle mass, especially if you're not experienced in the gym. A lot of people like to cut off when they start lifting weights. They don't understand they have to build a foundation. Like Arnold said, he likes to build... He likes to build a statue that he can sco scope later, meaning he likes to bulk up, build muscle, and then trim down to show that muscle mass he built. And the reason why that's so important is if you don't have a lot of muscle mass to begin with, especially the younger audience who are around 150, 170, 180, that doesn't have a lot of muscle mass, they typically cut down just to want to see some abs or something, which is not terrible, but they got to understand they do not have the muscle mass to begin with to actually begin a good cut or to look good or to actually be strong while after the cut is finished this was me when, when I was 144 I was cutting I was a perma cutter I wasn't strong at all I was weak I was sore many factors to it but I got four faint ab lines that's the only thing I got do I suggest cutting when you don't have a lot of muscle or you're a beginner no I suggest building a foundation first and then cut if you decide later on after you're building a foundation to do a fast cut, a mini cut that typically lasts three to six weeks, then I would suggest perhaps not to do it and just do a slow cut. If you're going to do a fast cut, just keep in mind that the fat loss progress should is going to be around two, a half a pound, one and a half a pound, or two pounds a week. You could probably push it if your calories are higher, so you could probably lose three to four pounds. I wouldn't suggest it because mostly Going upwards to three to four pounds is probably mostly muscle mass and fat, especially if your sleep is not checked, your stress or the training programming, a lot of other variables, of course. Um, if you do a fast cut, you don't want to like a mini cut. You don't want to prolong it under than any longer than eight weeks. Typically, any longer than eight weeks, then you start losing more muscle because of the low calories you're consuming, and fat loss will slow down possibly. Probably work your metabolism, aka you'll probably lose muscle. And everyone knows if you want to burn calories, but you know, have a good physique and actually lose body fat mostly, you want to have a lot of muscle mass so you don't lose muscle. It's easier to lose fat than build muscle, so you don't want to do that. Um, same thing with the fast cut. Honestly, if it's slow, it could be you losing more muscle mass. Your calories are just so low that your metabolism is just catching up very rapidly. So your knee is probably low, like knee is like moving your hands, talking out loud, or just not exercise from gen exercise. So nothing exercise. So you're just talking or not or bobbing your leg. You're probably not doing that. So you're burning less calories, or or it could be you're just losing more muscle mass. It's just dependable. Now we will go into a slow cut, or it could be your fats are low for meter. That could be another um, opinion. Now we will go to a slow cut. A slow cut, I will highly recommend a slow cut to most individuals. Even if you have a lot of muscle to begin with, let's say you were running 44 like me and you bulked up to 200 and you want to start a cutting process. You're around 20% body fat, you want to start cutting. I won't recommend a mini cut, I will recommend a slow cut so you can keep your mostly muscle mass and you don't have a problem with disorder eating, especially if you had in the past. That's another variable. But if you don't have another problem with disorder eating, I just suggest a slow cut. Just because if you have a slow cut, you will retain most of the muscle. Your strength will go down so dramatically, especially mentally can mess with you. Um, a slow cut. The reason why a slow cut would go slow is because you're probably into it longer. 
typically around three months, depending how much body fat you have. Let's say you get a 200 pound individual who's 200 pounds uh, versus a 300 pound individual. We're not counting for muscle mass or body fat percentage, we're just counting for the weight. And let's say the 300 pound individual can lose three to four pounds because that 300 pound individual has mostly body fat and has a lot more fat than the 200 pound individual. Would it be faster for the 300 pound individual to lose a lot of body fat than a 200 pound individual? Yes, because the 300 pound individual has a lot of body fat to begin with, has 100 pounds more than 200 pounds. The 200 pounds probably have to lose 50, 50 extra pounds, maybe 30, 40, not a lot, compared to the 300 pound individual who has to lose probably 150, 100 pounds. It's just, it's dependable. And the reason why it would be slow, because a slow cut or a cut in general will last you about three to four months. Any longer will probably because you probably wasn't on track or your metabolism wasn't fast or your sleep wasn't checked or many other factors. But if it's any longer, then it's probably because you're a higher body fat percentage than you think you are. So, well, you probably are. So if you're 300 pounds, you probably want it longer to be in the cutting phase. Progress is slow for everybody. One month seems like a long time. Reality is to lose weight, like I lost 255 pounds. That's how I went all the way to 144. I, it took me about nine months. Actually longer than nine months because I was actually 180 when I lose, when I got when I got to 250 pounds. I was actually 180. And then after that, it took me about a year to lose. And all these YouTubers or all these fitness coaches, etc., talking about three months, etc. Well, three months is possible, but typically three months can be a little fast for everybody. So you have to be careful with that. Um, just take your time with it. Just do a slow cut. If this takes any longer, we just gonna we gonna talk about it more in the podcast, of course. If it's gonna take longer, how would you fix that problem? So let's talk about that. Um. Different ways to speed up the metabolism. This is the best part because the best part. This is the way to actually promote fat loss. It's actually ironic, but building muscle, eating more calories will help you lose weight. This will work for beginners. This will work for people who have the American diet. Would it work for a bodybuilder? Yeah, sure, depending how it goes. So, what I mean by speed of metabolism, I mean speeding up your knee or non exercise dermogenesis, and also I'm talking about your TDM, if I'm correct, or your um, muscle. The reason why we want to promote muscle growth because it will help the metabolism build more muscle over time and actually burn more calories. If you get a 200 pound individual who is mostly muscle mass versus a 200 pound individual who is mostly fat, that 200 pound individual of muscle will probably burn around 4,000 calories or higher by doing less cardio, let's say 15,000. Versus the 200 pound individual who has more fat, they'll probably have to do 25,000 or 30,000 just to get close as the 200 pound individual who has mostly muscle so the thing with metabolism and studies are is that are not accurate just because someone said oh it's 80 pounds or one pound of lean tissue muscle only versus 80 calories that can add up over time especially the things that you do when building muscle the the cognitive benefits the promoting benefits so you might want to go for a walk longer you might want to do a little extra cardio you might do a hobby that has physical activity or you might just Eat better whole foods. In result of that, protein is actually dermatin is a burning effect of protein, so you probably burn more calories. So many factors to it. So just because a study has said you probably burn more less calories than you really you really think, that can add up over time, especially if you have mostly muscle mass. I would suggest if you're starting off, eat trying to find your calories. If you can't find your calories, eat more whole foods. Eating more whole foods. Uh, versus the typical American diet will actually really dramatically lower the calories because calorie dense foods has a lot of calories versus whole foods and also whole foods got one thing in mind protein and also saturation it makes you more f uh, fuller than processed food like a cupcake or a donut or any of that it makes you more stuffed because of the protein content and is more volume for whole foods the reason why I would suggest whole foods because well you would lose weight. You eat less calories than you consume, and besides the point, you would probably get better hormones to build more muscle. So it translates over that as well. And everyone knows if you speed up your metabolism by with um, nutrition, 
and building more muscle, you will most likely lose body fat and that will correlate to more better sleep quality. And sleep is also important. You have to make sure your sleep is good. But besides the point of sleep, let's talk about nutrition. Um, it is just to eat more food. And after you eat more whole foods, I suggest to be in a site surplus. I'm not talking about a dirty bulk or a crazy surplus to a bulking. I'm talking about AKA a reverse diet. If you just start, you just finish a cut. So you're adding calories over time, probably 50 to 100, maybe 150 a week, depending on how fast your metabolism can adapt. Um, use this scale as a metric, but don't use it as a guarantee because if you're feeling good, you're building muscle in the gym and your logbook, say you're getting stronger each day but you gain three pounds don't think those three pounds are mostly fat think of it that's probably mostly muscle of course just if you sleep is not checked and everything else is good then those three pounds are probably are fat so don't stress of course so it's just variables you have to look outside what's in the gym don't just look what's in front of you look behind you okay uh, being a slight surplus of probably 200 to 350, even someone who's 300 pounds, I would suggest to be in a surplus if they know their calories. So let's say they're eating, let's say they're eating around 2,800 calories, junk food, maybe some clean foods, right? I'll say let's bump it up. Let's bump it up to 3,200 calories. Uh, let them go on a training program, like the four compound list, for example, and then let them eat mostly whole foods. Let them eat at least 80, 20. 80% whole foods, 20% dirty foods, and see what happens. And what's going to be a result of that, they can become more active because the extra calories they added on top of their maintenance, so they want to do more things. So it's a little pickup, it's like a little energy drink, but for calories. And they're eating mostly whole foods, so they're not really willing to eat 3,100, 3,200 consistently. And if they do eat 3,200, 3,100 consistently, they still will lose body fat because their body are not used to the whole food diet and more protein. So over a period of time of eating that food, eating all foods and building more muscle and eating more protein, they will definitely lose body fat because they're incrementally losing a little bit of fat, building more muscle, losing a little bit of fat, building more muscle. That's why the scale weight is kind of hard to dictate fat or muscle because you could be losing a little bit of fat and building a lot more muscle, but way more or even way the same. So it's very dependable how would you do it, but pretty much three factors is probably going to site surplus of 200, 250 to 300 calories of clean foods, mostly 80 to 20, and you have a good strength, um, good training programming, especially if all the variables like sleep and nutrition is sleep and um, stress is okay then do that number two is during this process trying to only focus on performance don't f focus on the scale don't focus on don't focus on oh my god i'm getting fat or you know don't focus on bmi just focus on please of the love of god your logbook if you're getting stronger each week or each two weeks you're doing something in the right dimension, uh, direction. You're building more muscle. Your body's adapting. So focus on adaptation and performance. Number three is um, look out, out under things outside of the gym. Look out, look after the eating, after the nutrition, and after the programming and things. What are you doing? What extra things are you doing? Do you pick up shadow boxing because you lost 30 pounds and you feel better? You can move more. Focus on other things, and then over time of that period of building more muscle, you're gonna be that 200 pound mass freak who can burn 4,000 calories by just sitting alone and doing fucking four hours of cardio. So just keep that in mind. It's actually the complete opposite. I would suggest that. Okay, different ways to measure yourself is is progress pictures. Progress pictures, measuring tapes. Body fat percentages, so density scans. I have a full video on that. Density scans um, and a scale weight. But a warning on the scale weight is scale weight. I made a video about this. It doesn't dictate to fat or muscle. If you gain three pounds of, of let's say three pounds, three pounds on the scale, and you weigh yourself clean, you pee into your poop, but your but your sleep is okay, your nutrition is awesome, your stress is awesome and your training program is saying you're getting stronger each time and you push yourself in the gym most likely those three pounds are not fat those are actually muscle 
But the problem with the scale weight is it's just going to say you weigh 353 pounds then 350. It doesn't say it if it's fat or muscle. It's not very specific. So you have to look what's outside of the gym then the scale weight, you know, and then the scale weight what it says. You can weigh yourself one time a week. I suggest just do it one time a week of end of the week. So if you if you're doing a seven day seven days typically you would weigh yourself um, on probably a Monday if it's like on Saturday or something like that. Just to give yourself a week to see where you're at and see if it's going up or down. If it's going up or staying the same and you got everything available and you're getting stronger, they don't change anything. You're probably building like a little bit of muscle, losing a little bit of fat, building a little bit of muscle, losing a little bit of fat. And that we call that the Goldilocks zone. If you gain weight consistently or you know if you gain weight like a pound a week or two pounds look at your logbook if it's if you gain stronger each time your calories are not excessive like a thousand calories surplus or you know you're doing the cardio and you know your sleep is good and all these other variables that that's probably mostly muscle mass if you're losing a little bit of weight going go back to that if you're losing a little bit of weight go you know go up in calories um but that's a little this is my little um, nitpick on the scale. Use it as a metric, use it as a tool, but don't use it as a worshipper. Don't be like, oh my god, this is Drew, Drew Pounds, I must be fat. No, 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 no. If you feel good, if you know you're getting stronger, just don't use the scale. Now we're going to go to body fat percentages. A quick warning to body fat percentages as well. These are typically 2 to 5% inaccurate. So it depends, it's very dependable, especially what type of body fat percentage you get. If you get a Detsa scan, you bought off of Amazon or any scale that says your body fat percentage, it's not accurate. It's Those things can probably be 10% inaccurate because, well, it's not really science based. You got it from Amazon. So a little logic, a little. A little logic comes along a way. If you measure yourself from like a gym or from actually a hydro weigh-in, of course, or any other place that measure body fat percentage or skin full caliber, make sure with the skin full caliber you get the same person that's pinching you pretty hard so they don't mess up the percentages, then then you should be pretty accurate. If you're let's say 20% body fat, you pictures you don't necessarily compare yourself to other people, but use it as a metric and a tool. Um, if you're around 20% body fat, but the, let's say the skin for caliber, skin for caliber says you're 25% body fat, you know you should be around 20 to 21% body fat at least. And you know if it keeps going up, you probably, you probably are gaining a little bit body fat. If it's going down a percent, you're probably losing a little bit more body fat. If it's stagnant, then you're probably in the middle, or you're probably recomping. That's another form. It's called recomping. It's pretty much losing a little bit of fat, building a lot more muscle. So it keep coming back. We go. We're going back to it. Now we're going to talk about measuring tapes. Measuring tapes. I would suggest measure. You don't have to measure your legs, but that's another form of measure. You can measure your legs. You can measure your arms. The world, really, your legs and your your circumference of your belly. How to measure yourself is like weighing yourself in the scale. You want to be less bloated. You want to be. You you don't want to have no waste in your system. You want to pee. You want to make sure you do all these other variables. You do not want clothing on. You don't want anything around your belly to your back. And how would you weigh? Your, how would you measure yourself? Is you put it around your waist, probably up higher, probably above your love handles, like right here, up below your rib cage, near your belly button, and then you probably put the measuring tape right in the middle of your belly button. And you see it right there. So if you're 35 inches, you know you're 35 inches. But a little problem with the measuring tape, if you're bloated consistently or you have any problems like that, then it can be inaccurate. And progress pictures are probably the best thing, but here's the thing. Do not, a lot of people like to put filters on the progress pictures or something. Do not put filters, make it raw, have good lighting, make sure your legs are involved, make sure your hips, make sure you have some undies so you can look look at look at yourself make sure your ASIC is bare naked you want to see every variable because you might not be losing body fat near your abdomen or your side handles but you're losing a shit ton of body fat near your legs or inside your groin or um, on your butt that's probably the most common for man and female 
So you gotta see these variables with progress pictures. What would I suggest overall? Use progress pictures, use every metric. If you don't have time for that, then use the skill, but make sure that you understand the skill is just a tool, it's not the one, say, be all. And use progress pictures, those are probably the best two. And also measuring tapes, but if you only have time for two things, then use the skill. Or just use the skill in general, and speed of your metabolism, build more muscle to lose body fat. That's really it for it, of what I suggest we just talked about, and yeah, that's it. That's, that's literally it. So, um, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna get, uh, God, sorry. I'm gonna give you guys a quick summary. Speed your metabolism by having a slight surplus. So if you're eating 3,000 calories, eat around 300, 3, uh, oh, 3,200 or 3,300 calories. So about 250 to 300 calories surplus. Make sure those calories are coming from whole foods. If you have the American diet and switch to the whole foods diet, then you're eating more protein, you're becoming more full, so the damper's craving, so you don't overeat on processed food. And if that will happen, then you will build more muscle because of the protein intake, and you can have better quality of life. So that's going to translate to the function of doing more activity, building more muscle, having more fun, having better sleep, having more, better less stress. And over time, you will build that muscle to become that 200 pound monster freak, like 200 pound 200 pounder who can burn 4,000 calories by sitting all day or that 170 pounder who can burn calories sitting all day and In this world of calorie consumption and processed food You really want to burn a lot more calories if you don't burn a lot more calories and eating 2,000 calories It's gonna be very very difficult to diet or very difficult to stay in your calorie range to not gain body fat So that's a different way you can measure your, you can speak out your metabolism. What I suggest why would, okay, uh, fat loss progress, uh, if it's slow or fast, of course, if it's slow, uh, why is it slow, why is it fast, dependable, if you're doing a mini cut or a slow cut, it depends, but what I would suggest in the end is to speed up the metabolism, build more muscle, this comes for the under generation, so the older generation and the younger generation, I wish I had this information when I was younger, so I don't, re I didn't eat low calories to begin with. If you started by a slow cut and you're done with your fat loss journey, do a reverse diet and increase your calories over time. But that's it for today's video. I really work hard on these pockets. I try to give you guys more information. If you guys have any videos ideas I can make, I already make a video about Ozempic and um, debts of skins and everything else. Please give me comments below. If you want to email me, I do free nutrition coaching. You can email me right over here. And that's it for today's episode 12 of No BS Nutrition. How, how to measure fat loss progress.